Uh, uh, delighted to be uh, joined here by uh, James Dowling, uh, one of the real renowned experts on luxury watches here in the UK and especially known as, a, as an expert in Rolex. So James, your, your book, Best of Time Rolex Wristwatches, really is a, a reference for, uh, for Rolex. Why did you choose Rolex to really concentrate on? I suppose the, the smart ass answer would be that because it's the only real watch company that was ever founded in London. Mm. Um, but in fact, what intrigued me about Rolex was that when I started to collect watches about 30 years ago, I focused on early automatic watches, which was a, a really interesting period in the late 20s, early 30s. Mm. So I used to wear all these watches at various times. And what I noticed was that the Rolex was the only one that worked, was the only one that kept itself wound, that mm. worked properly, that kept anything near reasonable time. So I decided to start to collect early Rolex. And when I did that, I decided to try and find out more about the company. And all I got was this conflicting series of anecdotes from people all over the place, none of which made any sense. So I thought, sod this, I'll go and do it myself. Of the products themselves, which do you think are the most iconic uh, individual products in your judgment? Everybody thinks of watches like the Day Date and the Submariner as the, as the Rolex icons. The irony is that you as a retailer will know that the, the real product, the real icon, the one that sells most, is probably the Two-Tone Ladies Date Just, of yeah. which there are more of those around than I think any other model. And that's a market that Rolex have very much created for themselves. It's, it's a ladies watch that she can wear with an evening dress or to play tennis. And it's a social signifier in the same way that an Hermes Anne bag or a pair of, uh, or a Vuitton bag are. It's, it's a sign. It, it, is, it is a sign. It's a beautiful piece of jewellery. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife has exactly that product with a, a mother of pearl dial on yeah. it. And it, uh, it just adds that last element of, uh, uh, of something that's very, very attractive. Well, uh, Rolex is very famous for their, their testing procedures. I think you've seen yeah. some of them. Can you tell us a bit about your experience of that and how it's so important to Rolex? What people don't understand is that Rolex make um, an awful lot of watches a year. They, they, they decline to say how many, but the, the numbers that come out of the uh, office in Switzerland that regulate chronometers say that Rolex put about 800,000 watches a year through them. So you'd assume that Rolex watches are made by machines. Having visited all four of their factories and, and visited them on more than one occasion, um, the thing that's most amazing is that the amount of handwork that mm. goes into them. So they, they use handwork wherever possible and they use machines almost solely for testing. Um, and the testing is phenomenal. So if a watch is waterproof to 100 meters, mm. they test to 25% over, so they'll test to 125 meters. Mm. And for the, for the deep sea, the machine that they have for testing how deep that will go to is built like mm. the biggest safe that your company owns. Mm. And it's built for them by the French diving company Comex. Mm. And it's built like a diving bell mm. to resist incredible high pressures. And they don't just test a sample of the watches, they test every mm. single watch, which I think is unprecedented for somebody making that sort of, producing that kind of volume. Yes. And even the, the, the timekeeping, every watch, once it's assemb fully assembled and ready to go, is then tested for timekeeping. Mm. They put them in a big frame, it goes away downstairs into a it's not a vault, it's a giant building that's four stories high underground. Mm. And they've taken a photograph of it just before it goes down. They take a photograph exactly 24 hours later and they superimpose the two photographs on top of each other. Mm. And that way the a computer will see any divergence between the minute and seconds hands mm. and will alert an operator. And only then will a human being come in and remove the offending watch. How important is Basel to Rolex, do you think? It, it, it's, it's what the old anecdote about baseball is. It's not a matter of life and death. It's much more important than that.
For Rolex, it's their one chance a year to pitch to their clients, yep. to keep them happy, to satisfy them, and to build on that relationship that is literally a matter of life and death for Rolex mm. and for the clients. Yes. How important is Rolex for Baselworld? They are by far the largest single brand there. Their operation at Baselworld is bigger than anybody else's. Their stand is three floors high, and the top floor, there's a private restaurant mm. with full waiter service. Yes. Any hint of what you might expect from Rolex or what you'd like to see from them? Well, if we've, if we've all been looking at the newspapers recently, we've been seeing all the revelations about Russian hacking and CIA leaks and all that sort mm. of stuff. I always joke that the CIA actually take lessons from Rolex and how to keep <laughs> secrets. They are... They're great. They, mm. th they, are, they are like the proverbial oyster. They mm. keep it closed until yeah. they want it open. When they want it open, they'll open up and they'll, yeah. they'll disgorge their little pearl. But up until that very moment when the blinds come off the windows at Basel, mm. they keep it tight as an oyster.